Houses and Mine Districts. We can speak now to the Member of Parliament for North Tong, the Honorable Samuel Okojoto Ablaka. Good morning to you, sir. Hi, good morning, Francis. I trust you're well and keeping safe, sir. Ah, uh, we are. We are. We are soldiering on. I can imagine. Um, I know yesterday you did launch um, a program in terms of providing consistent relief for those who have, who, who have been affected by this. In the last week or two, how has this spillage impacted your life and work as the people's representative? Thank you, Francis, for the opportunity. And let me thank you in the media for uh, the support, the solidarity, and how you are bringing our plight to the attention of the Ghanaian community and the international community. Thanks to your coverage, we are beginning to get some attention and some uh, additional support. So we are very grateful to all of you, particularly your listeners, for the continuous solidarity. To be honest with you, Francis, since I was elected member of parliament, for the good people of North Town, some 11 years ago, this is by far the biggest challenge. I have never seen anything like this. And all my constituents have never been through this experience, not in a lifetime, not in a generation. We are going through an unprecedented disaster a man-made disaster. And the Water River Authority has a lot of questions to answer. Why they adopted this model, why they didn't start this feeling long ago on a gradual basis, and decided to take us by surprise. Uh, even as a member of parliament, they did not engage me and other stakeholders and inform us because they are the only ones who will have known the scale of discharge or spilling that they will be carrying out. So they should have told us, they should have been transparent with us so that we can relocate our people, move them to higher ground. And the level of devastation, the level of losses will have been far mitigated they didn't do that. Now, as we speak, according to NADMO, more than 10,000 of my constituents have been displaced. According to NADMO, we are the worst affected in all the constituencies that this uh, uh, spilling has, 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 has caused. The havoc it has wreaked. We are the worst affected. So, I can confirm to you, Francis, that now as we speak, we, when this disaster struck, we had just about three camps initially. The camps have increased to 19. And you have people who could not salvage anything. Most of the people we are talking about, they just had to run for their dear life. You know how devastating, how decimating water can be when water is gushing out, is rising. I mean, you, you know it. You know that even in biblical times, water destroyed the world. Mm -hmm. So people had to just run for their dear life and could not take anything, no valuable, no belonging, no no food items, no clothing, nothing. So they are bare at these camps, and they are in dire need of support. And that is why I am glad that yesterday I was able to launch the MPs mobile relief caravan. We have secured a truckload of rice, that bags of rice, bags of maize, bags of sugar, cooking oil, 
tan fish, mosquito nets, life jackets, uh, sanitary towels, tissues, uh, and, and, and all kinds of uh, blankets and all kinds of uh, items that are urgently needed. Because having gone around the camps, we have interacted with the people, we ourselves have seen the plight, and we know exactly what they need. So I'm glad that the launch came off successfully. And the, as I speak to you this morning, the items are being distributed to all the camps. The advantage of what we did yesterday is to really showcase to the world that when you bring items here in Northtown, we have established a distribution system so you can be rest assured that very efficiently within the same day, the items will be distributed to all the 19 camps. That's what we demonstrated to the media yesterday. We don't want people to worry about bringing items and they'll be left in an MP's house or in an assemblyman's uh, uh, boys' quarters or, or what have you. The items will not go to anybody's house. It won't go to anybody's office. There is no private ownership about it. It will immediately get onto the caravan and it will be distributed promptly to all the 19 camps that have been established. So that is the message we want to emphasize. And we want the good people of this country, corporate Ghana, NGOs, churches, all of those who have indicated that they are preparing to donate. Please be rest assured that we have set up very efficient systems. Our caravan is on the move, and all the 19 comes will be served. I must also state, Francis, that a major development yesterday was the final visit of the president. Remember that when this disaster struck, many have called on the president to speak to it, as he has done about other disasters in other jurisdictions. And many have urged him to come and visit. So I must uh, acknowledge that finally the president showed up. The president had a helicopter tour of the crisis. So he has seen for himself at vantage point the extent of the devastation, the level of the horror, the anguish that our people are going through. So the visit must be welcomed. It must be duly acknowledged. However, I have reservations, two main reservations. His address, how he spoke to my people. Look. Let me just, before you yeah. go into that, yeah. um, yesterday when the president arrived at Mepe, were you present? No, I was not invited. Oh, you were not invited? Yes, I was not invited. Wow. Don't you find that puzzling? Very, very, very. And uh, it is most disappointing. It shows the level of pettiness um, in, in our politics. Um, I thought that even the president's local representative, the DC, could have called me, or any of the regional ministers, some of whom are my colleagues in parliament, uh, and, and those in the ministerial, the interministerial team, will have um, will have will have will have called me and told me about this. I heard about this visit uh, 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 in the media, and uh, later on. Um, uh, some of the chiefs who were supposed to be at my event to receive my items said that they had received a call to welcome the president. And so um, they would want us to uh, delay our lunch so that when they are done welcoming the president, then they will uh, attend my uh, event 
and uh, receive uh, the items on behalf of the displaced uh, uh, people of North Tongue. So, so that's what happened. I, I was, I was not, I was not invited. But I must say that okay. uh, I am not surprised the level of petty politics going on. And you could tell from the president's address that he was coming to engage in politics. Uh, and, and 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 that is why I say that I'm I'm really disappointed in the president's uh, uh, address and the president's conduct. Uh, this is not a time to remind people about how they vote. And this is not a time to tell the people that you hope that in the future they will vote for your party. I mean, people are going through a humanitarian crisis. They are traumatized. They are displaced. You are speaking to them at a camp. The president was at Methus and Kizito. At a camp, if it was ordinary time, good time, where we can have the luxury of talking about politics and people's voting patterns, the president will not be meeting them at a makeshift camp. You know, you'll have been at a rally ground or some, you know, usual political event, you know, uh, where people are, 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 are okay, have put themselves together. But not at this time. You're speaking to them at a relief camp, a, a, a shelter, a makeshift, you know, uh, a shelter. And this is not the time to talk about politics and to say that even though you don't vote for me, I will try to help you. you. You Look, when you are elected, you have an obligation. All the things I'm doing as MP, I don't ask for people's party cards. I don't ask that let us fish out uh, the people who don't vote for, because I didn't get 100%. I may have gotten the widest margin in the country, uh, but I, I, I still didn't get 100%. So there are definitely a few people who uh, uh, didn't vote for me. There are MPP executives in this constituency. The MPP has an office. They have a structure in, in, this, in this constituency. So uh, it is not a time to think about politics. Which we are all human beings first. That's what matters. We belong to a common humanity. Just being human being is enough. And you being the leader, you have an obligation. You are managing our resources, our taxes. And did the president forget that he's speaking to people who gave up their land for own dam to be built, for Akosombo dam to be built? They, a lot of them have not even been compensated yet. And they are bearing the brand for all of us. <laughs> These are the people who have sacrificed for all of us to have electricity, to have power, to industrialize our country. So is he forgetting about our contributions? We pay taxes. So is it just about votes? Is that really what matters? Is it votes that matter? The people's contribution that led to the establishment of the Akosombo Dam. If you read Kwame Kuma's inauguration address of the dam, the commissioning of, of, of the dam in 1965. The president, President Kuma, paid glowing tribute to my people. You know, so, I mean, people are making sacrifices, giving up their land. They are, they are look, all of this failing. If they didn't give their land, if uh, the, 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 the decision was not made, at left side of Sombo here, they will not be going through what they are going through. So is this how to show respect, to show gratitude? You know, so look, what the president has done must be condemned by every objective Ghanaian. And he shouldn't do that again. He owes the people an apology. He should not be engaging in that kind. That is not what you do this time. The second reservation I have relates to the president still making promises. I want to see agency. I want to see proactivity. Honestly, I thought that the president will have come having mobilized, having marshaled relief items and resources to be distributed. Because, look, you control our taxes. In the national budget, I am a member of parliament. I know that we have a contingency fund. So even though nobody will have seen that VRA will engage on this reckless path and and just you know uh, destroy wipe away many communities and villages in the budget we have a contingency fund. So 
why is there no agency? Why are we still hearing promises? After all these days, the president is still making promises that he's told his ministers to see what they can do and to provide the needed, you know, relief items and all of that. And if me, as an MP, a uh, small MP individual, we are able to mobilize truckloads of support, I am wondering why the, the whole government, and that is what is feeding into perception that it's as if people are people in government are reluctant to to help because it's in the voter region. And and it doesn't help. We are all Ghanaians first and foremost. We have a collective humanity. I like that saying that if something affects a human being anywhere, it diminishes our common humanity. We are all human beings. And we must care for one another. It doesn't matter which part of the country. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter, you know, where the disaster has struck. So I do hope that these promises the president made will be redeemed as, as quickly as possible. Because the situation is dire. We, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are living in very difficult times. These are unprecedented times. People's conditions. Are really terrible. People are at the mercy of the VRA, are the, are the mercy of the vagaries of the weather. And uh, this is not the time to be engaging in the usual petty politicking and empty rhetoric or empty promises. The people need our immediate attention, our immediate compassion, and they need it now. Um, in terms of Actions to be taken. Yes, you have explained what has been done and the missteps. We spoke to Dr. Ishmael Norman yesterday, who is of the opinion that this is one of the worst planned emergency response that he's ever seen and that some heads must be rolling by now. People should be losing their jobs as a result of such poor implementation. Is this a call that, based on what you've seen on the ground, you support? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know why the top management of VRA are still at post. It is an affront that they are still at post. How they totally mismanage this whole village, how they treated the people with contempt, even as a member of parliament. No call, no engagement. And they tell us that oh, some months ago they did simulation. Simulation is to prepare people for disasters in the future. When you are actually about to, to carry out the discharge, the spilling, the people should know. That September 12th statement they issued very late in the day, which doesn't say much, doesn't tell us exactly what is going to happen. You were not forthright with us. So it's a total disaster. And they, they know that they owe the people a duty of care. Where were the officials? Where were their safety departments? We want to see the plans that they made for our people. Where were they in making sure they engage the communities, in making sure that we are out of harm's way, we have relocated to higher ground before they open their valves? I mean, I mean what, 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 what? it's like somebody wanted to commit mass murder. It is by God's share and divine intervention that we did not record casualties. So I am clear in my mind, and I'm going to make sure right from Parliament there will be an inquiry, there will be a probe into this matter. People will be called before Parliament to answer questions because we must make sure this does not happen again. And as a country, when we put people in positions, they must learn to take responsibility. They must learn to be accountable to the people. And they must learn not to take the people for granted. So we will make sure that there's a parliamentary probe into this whole accountable and on dams village. Then we will also make sure that there is full compensation. If people are sitting here thinking that after all of this distraction they have caused, 
they will get away with it. <laughs> they must be joking. We are going to make sure that people are compensated. You come to destroy people's homes, people's livelihoods, people's. I met a young man. He's twenty thousand fingerlings. He has just started. He showed me the videos. He has just started a fish pond business. All of that is gone. Fish ponds can be easily relocated if he had been given notice. You've destroyed many people's livelihoods. People have now been made poor just overnight by the by the indiscretion, incompetence, and ineptitude of a few people. They will not get away with it. And we have saved notice. They will surely not get there. They should prepare for full compensation. And if they don't convince us that they are making plans for full compensation, we will bring a class action. We will go to court. Enough of treating people with contempt. Enough of the distraction. Because people are put in leadership positions and they think that everybody else can go to hell. People will be made to account. That assurance I give to you and I give to my people. Um, in all this, are you losing a lot of sleep? Are you, are you able to hold body and soul together? Because I've seen the pictures, I've seen the devastation, but I'm thinking of what you are doing on the ground as well. Are you losing a lot of sleep? Are you even able to sleep at all? No, you can't. You can't sleep. This is not the time to sleep. It's not the time to sleep. This is uh, a lost appetite. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, as I speak to you, my greatest fear now is a potential public health crisis mm -hmm. because the water has entered into all kinds of arenas, which. All of us must be worried about. We must be scared to death. Do you know the water has entered into mortuaries, yes. into cemeteries, into uh, refuse dumps, landfill sites, sewage systems, public toilets? So I've been going around, pleading, even at yesterday's launch, I pleaded with my people. Yes, I know town people are noted to be good swimmers. We live by the river, we just like the water, we drink it, we bathe with it, we cook with it, and all of that. But please, this is not the water we know. It's so contaminated. And I am glad to announce to you that I have forged a very great partnership with the Ghana Medical Association. Today we are receiving seven doctors they are sending to us. And... Um, we are just like we did with the relief caravan. We are doing a medical caravan as well. We're going to go around with these doctors to screen everybody. Uh, if some people are getting cholera typhoid already, uh, early treatment so that it doesn't spread. Um, and, uh, and then they will help us to contain these communicable diseases, they'll help us with uh, uh, psychological and trauma management you know, because so many people are traumatized. So I, I'm, I'm really excited about this partnership with the Ghana Medical Association. I want to thank them very much uh, for being so um, so humane and so compassionate when I reached out to them. But, but really, that is my fear, you know, and unfortunately, Ghana Water Company has cut water uh, they have explained that a lot of their pump stations were submerged, so they couldn't continue to pump water. ECG has cut uh, electricity in many of the communities. I can understand because they were trying to prevent mass electrocution. Their substations submerged. Uh, so it has compounded the health situation. People are congested in camps and all of that. So just imagine if there is a cholera outbreak or a typhoid outbreak. So that is my next biggest fear, as I speak to you. So it's the 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 the, 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 the crisis is hydra-headed, Francis, very hydra-headed, and um, 
uh, you have to be moving around like a headless chicken, uh, but still managing to uh, uh, to think because you cannot just you know be as a leader. You have to think through and come up with solutions very very quickly, very swiftly, so that you things don't get out of hand. And and and, and that's what we are doing. We are we are, we are doing our best. And uh, as I said earlier. We can only thank you in the media uh, for, uh, for 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 also highlighting this and calling on Ghanaians to come to our aid. Mm. And, and 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 already we we are beginning to see results. Uh, I received a call from the Ghana Tankers Association uh, that they are coming here this morning. I've also received a call from the Christian Council of Ghana. They are also on their way uh, to donate relief items and. Uh, we are grateful to, to all of them. I'm sure that there will be many more companies who will be calling. Uh, the Catholic Church has also reached out. They are also uh, they've also decided to gather items across all the uh, branches, and uh, they will be with us shortly. So um, we are grateful, but for you in the media, um, our plight will not have been highlighted to get to the attention of all of these uh, important groups. So we are, we are grateful to you okay. uh, for your support. I know, I know there's a lot you're doing now. I don't want to take too much of your time. However, I've also noted, it may be a digression, but I've noted that you're, you've also taken aim and raised issues relative to some lands here, at, here in Accra airports that are being taken over under what you describe as very questionable circumstances. Is this something you want to discuss now or you want us to finish with the humanitarian crisis before? Finish if we can finish with it, finish with the humanitarian crisis uh, because uh, life first, life first. Let's save the people, mm-hmm. and then um, uh, I can promise you I can come to the studio and we would have a detailed discussion about this. Sure, I'm passionate about uh, all of those uh, uh, looting schemes uh, as well. Um, so that we can have time to really delve into those matters. All right. The hon- uh, Honorable, I thank you very much for your time. Um, I'll, I'll leave you to continue with the work you're spearheading to provide relief for the, your constituents and for those who, who have been affected. We will keep in touch. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Right. So that's Samuel ok- Okujeta Blakwa. He's the Member of Parliament for North Tong, joining us this morning. Uh, he's had quite a round, let's say, from work that he's spearheaded to do to the president's visit for which he did not get an invitation, to the comments made by the president that he found in bad taste, to the interventions that he's expecting, the wave of the public health crisis that's also clear and present in the community, as you, as you may have heard and mentioned. Also, you know, taking aim uh, at the voter uh, river authority and its leadership. And what he says will be, if there's lack of compensation and lack of action, a class action will be initiated against them. He's expecting that those at the helm of of the VRA today should not be keeping their jobs as they have it today based on what we have seen and the level of devastation. Um, If you've not heard what the president said yesterday, here's exactly what he said. When I took the oath of office as president, I took the oath of office as president of every single individual in Ghana. Of all peoples in Ghana, all districts. And whether they voted for me or not, once I have taken the oath, I am the president of all the people. So, Togbe. You and your elders, I want the people here, you, beginning with you and the elders, to understand that when something like this happens and government acts, government is acting for Ghanaians, all Ghanaians. I came here because Ghanaians, the chief of staff called me in America. 
about what had happened and we discussed what had to be done so that's when we agreed to establish an interministerial committee to coordinate government response to this tragedy the coordination is about immediate, about tomorrow, and about tomorrow, tomorrow. The most important thing was, first of all, to ensure the life of people. And that is why nine centers were established here in Mepe for all the displaced people. And the people, all the people in these nine centers have been provided relief items by Nagmo. And it's not most intention to continue the exercise of providing relief items. So apart from what NADMO is doing, we have also to think about the future. I'm aware that you are farming people. The people who are farming on the banks of the rivers. River banks that have overflown and destroyed many of the farms. So one of the things that the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Finance, and the Office of the President is going to be working with the District Assembly is to decide exactly the nature of the support we have to give to you when the water has gone away to enable you to do the farm. Minister of Finance, Minister of Agri, President of Office, this is why I'm saying that the committee is working in several phases. One, immediate relief. And then tomorrow. But I want you to know that the government is going to do everything in its powers to assist, to make sure that things are all right. I think everybody here, and I hope you take the message all across, North Tongu, South Tongu, Central Tongu, that when these things happen and government acts, politics does not come into the matter at all. Politics When I took the oath of office as president, I took the oath of office as president of every single individual in Ghana. Of all peoples in Ghana, all districts. And whether they voted for me or not, once I have taken the oath, I am the president of all the people. So, Togbe, you and your elders, I want the people here 
you, beginning with you and the elders to understand that when something like this happens and government acts, government is acting for Ghanaians, all Ghanaians. I, I came here because Ghanaians are having difficulties and are suffering. And it is my responsibility to try and help. Because if it's a question of counting who votes for me and who doesn't vote for me, I shouldn't be here because you don't vote for me. But, but that is not my concern. And in any event, one day you will vote for me and my party. <laughs> So Tommy, I came here this afternoon to express my sympathies and to commiserate with all the people of Mepe and the area. I chose Mepe because... So that's the president speaking um, yesterday in Mepe in the voter region, specifically in the, in the North Town constituency in the voter region there speaking about actions being taken uh, and then on to the comments about the fact that the people don't vote for him and that's not the reason why he's there he's there to serve as president for all um we will be engaging some more persons in our conversation here on the first check uh, but of course your your views and comments are welcome the whatsapp line um is Zero five five two eight eight zero um two one six zero five five two eight eight zero two one six. That's the number you can reach us on this morning uh by WhatsApp so we can hear from you and share uh your thoughts with the rest of
forecast. So with the seasonal forecast, they normally predict the cumulative uh, rainfall for the season. So, and then the short range forecasters also come in to be providing the daily and then the weekly uh, forecast to the general public. So we all work hand in hand. So from the seasonal forecast, the latest one that was released for September, October, November, uh, the indication is that uh, for those over the northern sectors, we are anticipating the rain to start declining uh, and then uh, towards the end of the uh, rainy season. And uh, we are looking around uh, uh, between the, the third to fourth week of October into the third week of November. So from now to that time, yes, we still expect one or two rains that will will come in over the north and then uh, uh, add up to the little that we, uh, we we have. But then in terms of the quantum, in terms of the the, the volume, uh, it's not likely to be as compared to what we have experienced throughout the year. All right. So just so we're clear, you're saying that rain is expected, but it will not be as serious as what has already come through that has filled the down to a level where they have to spill. Yes, over the north. Yes, up north, you mean, yes. Okay. Um, there are reports that suggest that um, the VRA is laying some blame at your quarters for not giving the appropriate forecasting in terms of volumes to expect for rain and how that guides in your spillage program. Mr. Mr. Samuel Fletcher made his disclosure and said that the forecast was that we may not get water this year. So we had to protect ourselves so we could produce electricity. But around July, we realized the situation was different. And that is the work of God that no man can stop. So did you give enough notice <laughs> to the meteor agency, uh, to the VRA, for them to plan with their spillage? Uh, thanks so much. Uh, I don't know if you have if you've been following our for daily forecast, weekly forecast, and the seasonal forecast. I don't know much, but... Uh, some of your sister stations do, and uh, I think they can attest to it that, yes, in terms of accuracy, GMET, we have really, really up our games. We are not God, but it is God that grants us the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to interpret the seasons and then come out with the, with, with the forecast. The gentleman in question, I don't really know him. And uh, GMET, we have been working with the VRA for a long time now. I have been in the agency for 24 good years and been a forecaster from 2005 January to date. We've been providing them with forecasts, weekly forecasts, where we provide them with the previous week review and we provide them with the rainfall data from stations that we have across the country. Those then we even provide them with temperature. We provide them with relative humidity. We provide them with the position of the intertropical boundary. So every time we update them, and then we give them the current week review, and then give them the the, the outlook and inform them that oh this week we are anticipating more rain over the north. We are anticipating less rain and blah 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 to them. Just yesterday we are done with the forecast for the whole week, how the week is going to be like. And we have a focal person that VRA has officially given to us in the person of uh, Mr. Paddy Philip, where we provide him with this information. Latest by early Wednesday, we send this information to, to him. If he doesn't understand anything, he calls in. And at times, so he joins our chat discussions that we normally host on Monday from 2 to 4 p.m. And at times, it's close at 5 p.m. He joins. At times, he comes to the office and then gets information. I could remember four or five weeks back, he called, was asking for one or two clarifications here and there, which we provided him with. So the gentleman saying that, yes, our accuracy, whatever, is not correct. I don't know where he's getting it from. And then uh, even in the papers that we have published, we are saying that we are expecting more rain for this year. We have something that we call La, uh, El, La Nina. Anytime we are in that phase, it has a positive impact on our rainfall region. And we don't just exist alone as Ghana. 
we work with other countries. We work with our World Meteorological Organization that provides us with global data. We then scale it to Africa, to West Africa, then to Ghana, and then come out with the forecast. So if he is saying this, I don't know where he's getting it from. And I believe that his manager is supposed to call him to book where he's getting it from. He should come and tell us where we misled them. So for you and, and for the meteor agency, you are not accepting any blame? No. We relative are not to accepting. where we are now? Yes, we are not accepting any blame because we provided them with the forecast. If you can, if you like, I can send you all the weekly forecast that we have sent to the gentleman by email. We can send forward all of them to you and you see where we have, whether we've indicated that we are going to experience uh, less rainfall or, 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 or so ever for 2023. If you are going to spill the dam, it is, it, 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 it is good. You involve your stakeholders. And when it comes to Ghana, GMET is a mandatory institution to provide the weather. And the dam is just because of the weather, because of the rain. So if you are going to spill, you need to come to us and we dialogue. If Bagri Dam, they are going to spill it. They inform us. They inform us as GMET. BRA, have they informed us? No. So why will you not come out to be blaming us? Bagri Dam, they over the years, every year they spill. Every year they spill. Every year they make sure that everybody is aware that this is what we are going to do. So if you are going to spill, must you do the situation? Not come and blame GMET. No. We have done our work with the limited resources that we have. We have done our work. If you don't understand anything, come to us. Let's dialogue. Let's see what is in it. And then you go ahead and do your feelings. All right, madam. Um, and so, just so I'm clear, going forward, you're saying that the rain levels will be relatively low compared to what we've seen so far. And so, there will not be a big reason why VRO will have to spill a bit more, right? With that one, I will not answer that one. If they really need information from us, they need to come to us, and then we provide them with the information. I will not say it's on air for them to pick. If they want a technical information to take a major decision, they should come to Ghana Meteorological Agency, and then we start the dialogue for them to go forward with whatever they want to do. All right. Madam Felicity Ahafianyo, I thank you for your time and for joining us this morning. That's Felicity Ahafianyo, and as you may have heard her mention, for more than 24 years, she's worked with the Ghana Meteorological Agency. She's now the chief forecaster in charge of central analysis and forecasting with the Ghana Meteorological Agency with her thoughts there on the advice they had given to the VRA and that they said they would have none of the blame that is being shifted around for what is going on and that they, ha they are not complicit in not providing information. They have done their best in providing the VRA with information on the rainfall uh, pattern and what to expect, which will guide their decision-making going forward. Um, <clears throat> we're trying to get in touch with the VRA as well to get an understanding of how come they're shifting the blame. And also, the calls that are coming in for the top brass of the authority to be sent packing home. Is this a call that they accept or it's a call that they reject. We will try and get in touch with them as well for, for their insights uh, on the matter. You're listening to Morning Star. We're live here on a crowd Star FM. It's 103.5. We're also live on Ultimate FM in Kumase. Live on Zeps FM in Zebula. On the world, we are live on starfm.com. We're also live on Zeps FM in Zebula. On the world, we are live at starfm.com.g. Let's now speak to Dr. Michael Shifor, the Chief Executive Officer for the Mortuaries and Funeral Facilities Agency. Good morning to you, sir. Hello, Doc. Can you hear me? Good morning. Dr. Michael Shifor, can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Star. Um, there's been a lot said about the Akosumba Dam spillage, but we're also aware that the waters have entered many parts, including morgues and even cemeteries. For you as an agency, how much of this is a problem and the potential health risk it poses for those in the nine districts affected? Thank you very much, uh, Francis. 
uh, let me call it a third day. Uh, the eighth one always calls me Michael. And I'm not Michael. My name is the outer form. Oh, we are sorry yes. for adding Michael. I'm sorry. Dr. Yacho no for Yes. Yes. Well, it was a very... It was an unfortunate incident that has happened to the beloved people of that area. And uh, as an agency for us, we are worried and concerned about the current situation and what is going on. Yes, we are aware the flooding has entered some some uh, some morgues, and it, it is a worry for us. But the good news about it is that the the, the morgue management were proactive before the water could enter. So uh, the the bodies that were in there were moved to other facilities close by. So as it stands now. No water, uh, even though some water entered uh, the morgue, uh, it didn't enter with people's bodies in there. I'm sure you've heard, you must have heard the announcement that was made on the, on the airwaves in that area. The whole idea was to, was to go in the direction that if you have plans of bearing your body immediately, then come for it and do the needful. You know, so those who went, they had plans of burying immediately. Even that, they took their bodies to other close morgues, close by morgues. So currently, we we shouldn't be worried that water entered the morgues that was full of bodies. It isn't the situation. But be it as it may. But doc, sorry, before you proceed. Yes, sir. Are you giving me confirmation that for all the nine districts covered here, you look trouble, at that east, at that west. Uh, Central Tong, North Tong, South Tong, um, Asujaman, all the nine districts affected by this village. Their mocks are empty. There are no bodies there, so we should not be worried about anybody's washing in the floodwaters. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the announcement that I'm sure you have that triggered this conversation was in the Sogakope area, you know, on the airways. And that is where my focus of discussion is. We haven't yet received any information concerning the other district, whether there is a challenge or not. We are monitoring the situation, and so far we've not heard. We have our people on the ground there, and we do, we've not heard of any uh, big issue in on that one. The major one was the, the one, is the Saint, is it the Catholic Hospital, St. Richard Novartis Hospital. That was close to the water bank. And that was where the announcement was made. I am sure that if other facilities were facing challenges of that sort, they would have come to attention and they would have done the need for. Let us not forget that the district health directorate is there, the regional health directorate is there, other officers of the Ministry of Health are on the ground monitoring. We also have our representatives on the ground monitoring the situation. And where we partook in the the Richard Novartis Hospital that is close to Soda Gopher. In that particular instance, I am telling you upon all authority that no but no water entered the morgue while there were bodies in there. They were proactive enough, they thought ahead of time and they did that they did the need for. But moving away from the morgue, such an incident uh, brings a lot of health care challenges. From, from our perspective, not that of the as an agency, but the whole healthcare in totality. It gives rise to what happened diseases, cholera, typhoid, dysentery, and all that. But aside that, the routine medical uh, services that are provided for the vulnerable or for the people in the society, like immunization shuttles, regular medical checkups, will be hampered. In that same hospital, not, not only did they move there, dead bodies. They also moved patients who were receiving care to other sister facilities in the in the in the in the area. So this is a, a total issue that has to be tackled from all angles and especially from the health aspect, which gives us cause to worry. Um so for your agency, what role are you playing in this in this in this crisis that is on our hands now 
overall, we are interested in whatever happens in the space of storage, transportation, and burial, which is our mandate. For now, our goal has been focused on the, the, the hospital we spoke about. The, that has that was close to the water bank. Aside that, we 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 are monitoring the other malls in the in the areas that are affected, and we'll take actions as and when the need arises. Okay, and and for the area specific to Senokope, where the call was made for people to come for the uh, uh, the uh, corpses, was that call well heeded to? And was the situation well managed? The situation, in my opinion, was well managed. Because in, in, our, in our opinion, even if the, the, it was moved to about two or three malls in the vicinity, even if they hadn't made the announcement, the hospital had made arrangements to move them already. So when they go to other facilities where the hospital was going to deposit these bodies, they met some family members who had come for yes. You know, they have some family members who are come for that. And let's be mindful that in a mall, it is not only the people from the vicinity that keep their bodies there. Other people come from far and near to capacity their bodies there. So the announcement was said that if you have plans to bury immediately, then you come for it. But if you don't, no problem. We will handle the situation for you. And that's exactly what the institution did and we must applaud them for that uh, that that's done. Okay. Let me also ask this by way of public information. So for the nine yes, districts sir. that are captured under this um spillage, if people have the remains of their relatives in walks across these areas, what will your advice be? Should it stay there or they should be moved out completely? As I said earlier on or indicated, we don't have reason to move anybody from within this, we don't have that. We don't have. We've not had the the briefing that there is a challenge in that respect. So it should be there. The area that we had intelligence on that we have decided we are taking some sort of action to ameliorate the situation, and that so for now, no one should have cause to worry, and everybody should just stay put and let the bodies be there. Okay. Until we mm -hmm. come out with clear and further direction on on what to do going forward, you are on yes, record sir. to have said maybe unrelated, but you are on record to have said that many of the morgues we have across the country are not certified. Since you made that statement, what's been the steps being taken to have the uncertified morgues certified? Thank you very much. On that same on that same uh, platform that the record was made. Uh, we we also mentioned that it has, we also mentioned that we are in the process of certifying these things. So when it's a, to get them certified, you need to give them standards. You know, so these standards have been developed. We are trying to validate these standards before we share with the industry players, the stakeholders. Then we give them time to to conform. Then we start our inspection. Mind you, there is there is the need to do this and do it right once and for all. We don't want a situation whereby we go and we have to come back. So we need to take our time and do it right and have it once and for all. So steps are being taken to get these things done. All right, Doc. Um, I want to say thank you for your time and for joining us. And we're sorry for calling you Michael. We're sorry. Uh, no problem. Thank you, and I appreciate uh, the, this morning for giving me the opportunity to also clarify a few things. All Thank right. You. We are always at your service. Wonderful. And we'll, and we'll always be in touch. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Right. That's the Chief Executive Officer for the Mortuaries and Funeral Facilities Agency, Dr. Yao Chufo. He's not Michael. Dr. Yao Chufo. That's the clarity that I need to put out this morning for you. Okay, then. Great. It's half past eight. We've had quite a comprehensive platter on the matter relating to the uh, Akosombo Dam spillage. There's more to bring you, in fact, but I'll go for a break now. When I return from the break, there's two more perspectives that we'll bring to you relative to this um, spillage that you may not have been paying attention to. We'll bring that to you this morning. And then we'll let you have your say. First on how the disaster is being managed 
the calls that have been made for some heads to roll, and third, maybe most important in the entire conversation, what did you make of the president's address when he engaged the victims of the dam spillage in the affected communities? We're back after the break with more. Stay with us.